Hey, what's up guys, Ref here. So today we have multiple stories involving video game related news and drama, starting with the Silent Hill 2 remake. And just like a lot of recent remakes, it is a complete dumpster fire before it's even released. Now, the Silent Hill 2 remakes team has recently announced that they wanna be faithful to the original game. However, they will have to adjust things and some factors for the contemporary audiences, which is also often described as the modern audience, which basically dead on arrival. Okay, you hear that phrase being used by the developers of an upcoming release, you know that thing is going to flop. Okay, those words should actually concern you because every time it's used, it's typically followed up with some virtue signaling crap that is reflected in the quality of the game. Now, Silent Hill 2's remake, this is what it looks like. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is how it is being tailored for the modern audience, okay? And despite some wackadoos on Twitter saying, this is actually 100% better than the original, I think we all know which one is the more traditionally attractive model here. And it's really kind of crazy thinking about the insane gap of years between the development of the original versus the remake and how, despite the increase in technology, this is what we get in the remake it's absolutely insane now for the team behind this the developer team is the bloober team which is as goofy goober as it sounds okay it's a fitting name for these people who are pushing to appeal to the modern audience now before we get into some of their quotes from their team let's remind ourselves who the bloober team is they are responsible for the cult classic layers of fear from 2016 and what a great excuse to use this germa clip from back then. This clip right here really gives you a peek into the twisted minds behind these horror classics and the team that's gonna be responsible for Silent Hill 2's remake. Which, how did I do that again? <laughs> no shit, go by, I wanna do it again. <laughs> I think I'm gonna die on camera. <laughs> I feel like the the asset is loading right here. You know what I mean? Hold on. I'll get it. <laughs> I can't even fucking imagine why you would have to do this. process why you would have that a scary game that's right silent hill fan base you can breathe a sigh of relief you know you're in good hands with this remake now of course it should also concern you that the distributor of this game is of course sony and that comes with a whole lot of issues and it's probably not surprising that we have clips like this going viral on twitter from the bloober team talking about how they want silent hill 2 to preserve the authenticity of the original game while also adapting a horror classic for modern audiences. This is one of the most offensive lines you could ever see as a gamer. Like, I would have had more respect for this team if instead of a remake, they just grabbed a bunch of original copies of the game and just threw them on the floor and then took a steaming shit on them than to see this phrase being used as kind of the moniker of this remake. This is ridiculous and nobody wants this. And again, a lot of people are confused. Why are you mentioning this modern audience? People in the replies, all of the top replies are asking, who is the modern audience? Why do we care about them? And why are you tailoring your game to fulfill their needs? Well, I think the best way of describing the modern audience is basically the loud screechers on Twitter who complain about things just for the sake of complaining about it, but never have any actual interest in purchasing the game that they're trying to change to fit their delicate sensibilities. And I think this comic really uh, gives a pretty good impression of this cycle. So you can see here, the creator saying this, I made more of the thing you like in the actual fan base saying, oh great, we love it. But then some loud screecher probably from Twitter comes in saying, I do not like the thing. You are a bad person if you do not address the fact that I do not like the thing. Then the creator shamelessly changes the thing to tailor the loud minority here. 
And then the original supporters say, wait, I don't like this change. Why'd you change it? We don't want to support you anymore. And then left with no one but the modern audience, the creator turns to the loud complainer saying, will you still buy the thing? And they say, no, I never had any real interest in the thing. Many, many, many such cases. Now, you might have also noticed, who is Bloober using as their engine? So they're using Unreal Engine 5, which should explain a lot. So Unreal Engine is uh, making the promise that they're going to provide all of the tech you need for a expansive open world experience for your gameplay and yada, yada, yada. Unfortunately, that seems like it's only a possibility if you align with some of their moral beliefs and their woke nonsense, because they also recently have stated this. So Unreal Engine coding standards now require video game studios to use inclusive language in programming and documentation. It's not even about the publishers anymore. It's not even about the developers. This is at the core of it all. Even in the creation process, even in the programming and the documentation of files even, you have to use inclusive language that won't offend anyone who might come across it. It's absolutely ridiculous. Now here is some of those changes and requirements that are being pushed by Unreal Engine. Let's listen to some of these. Inclusive word choice. When you work in the Unreal Engine code base, strive at all times to be respectful, inclusive, and professional in your use of language. This applies when you name anything, like classes, functions, data structures, types, variables, files, and folders, plugins, and so on. It applies when you write snippets of user-facing text, the UI, error messages, and notifications. It also applies when writing about code, such as in comments and change list descriptions, and so on and so forth. So yeah, basically every single factor that goes into coding or creating a game at its foundation must adhere to a inclusive word choices and standards that we just read. And you'll see some of the general topics like racial, ethnic, and religious inclusiveness. Do not use metaphors or similes that reinforce stereotypes. This includes those that contrast black and white, such as blacklist slash whitelist. Now you can see other topics like gender inclusiveness and slang here, and they'll give some examples of no-no words, that, uh, according to Unreal Engine at least. So blacklist, no longer allowed. You have to use alternatives like deny list, block list, exclude list, avoid list, unapproved list, forbidden list, and permission list. Ah, thank God. Well, what about white list? Nope. That shows some sort of power imbalance. You have to use alternatives like allow list, include list, sh trust list. I'm getting uh, 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 like some brain damage reading this. This is so ridiculous. Also, for master, here's some alternatives. Primary, source, controller, template, reference, main, leader, original, base. These are like the people who see something like a master list of something and they immediately think about slavery, but they're the ones who are like saying that you're the bigot because you're innocently using this word. Very strange stuff. But yeah, let's continue on here from one Sony influenced release to another. And that is Stellar Blade. We have to revisit this. It's been at least a couple of weeks since we really talked about Stellar Blade. The last time we really talked about it was the censorship of the original patch of this game that removed some outfits as well as blood and other things from the game, which is obviously upsetting to a lot of people who purchased this game on the promise it would not be censored. Now, throughout the entire process of Stellar Blade's creation and release, journalists have been seething and crying about it, whether it was in the teasers of this game or the actual release. And now we're seeing even more coping and seething when these sales reports are coming in. You can see IGN right here literally wiping away the tears as they write this headline saying, Stellar Blade has clinched the top spot of the April sales charts. Though it's the lowest sales to lead in April since Prototype 2. They can't even give a compliment. This game was the top selling spot for the April sales charts and they can't even view it or frame it as a compliment. They have to do it in a backhanded way that's trying to insult the success of Stellar Blade. Now, 
Ever since the censorship of the outfits and other themes in the game, a lot of people have been putting pressure on Stellar Blade, Shift Up, as well as Sony to revert these changes and give the gamers what they were promised. Now, here's one of the initial lists of the updated patches for this game, uh, fixing some general things, but a lot of people were searching around, what about the censorship of the outfits? Will they turn this around? Well, they ended this list with a and dot dot dot. There is no continuation. That is the end of their notes here. Just an and dot dot dot. And a lot of people were thinking, well, maybe that is a sort of foreshadowing towards some fixes in, in terms of the censorship. Well, not really. So here's what would actually be released in some of the upcoming patches that were released shortly after that list. And of course, we see some outfits here that do show a lot more skin and resemble some of these censored outfits. However, a lot of people were praising this without realizing the original outfits are still censored. These are just new outfits and new variants. The original variants are still censored. So basically, it was a bait and switch where they didn't really change anything. They just added in more outfits without going back on any of the original censorship. So a lot of journalists like those from Kotaku use this as a chance to mock people who were confused as to how to view this with this title here saying, Free Stellar Blade Movement can't decide if new outfits are sexy enough, which of course, as always, with every single Kotaku article, there's only two explanations for the way that they're framing this article. Number one, either they're complete idiots and they have no understanding of what they're trying to talk about, or they do understand and they're just disingenuous in trying to frame the issue in a very biased or even just outright wrong way to fit their own agenda. And as always with Kotaku, they are all over this. They have to write 20 to 30 articles every goddamn week just to keep the lights on. So basically, they have to do anything they can, especially with these new Stellar Blade updates, to stay relevant. And there would be more articles coming out, like this one saying, how to get Stellar Blade's new, very revealing outfits, with this little statement under it saying, just when you thought you've seen enough of Eve, now you can see almost all of her, which is obviously done in a very snarky way, implying that they don't want to see any more of her, which is odd. Like, okay, you should, probably shouldn't play the fan service game if you don't like fan service. But it's written by this Claire Jackson individual. And you can see if you go on throughout the article, they get very upset about all this stuff. They say, oh, hey, there's a new cute, new cute attire for Eve and Stellar Blade, thanks to version 1.003. And yup, adults on the internet are reacting in a totally healthy, productive, and mature way about it. Well, no, that's not effing true at all. As expected, some people are thrilled to see more digital nudity, while others are stamping their feet, upset that Shift Up hasn't given them what they wanted, which is a free speech in digital tits. Y'all know porn exists, right? This is the most obnoxious phrase ever. Yes, people know porn exists. But you know what? There's a difference between fan service in a fan service video game versus hardcore pornography. And I am sorry your brain is so clouded that you don't know the difference. People were promised certain things and they weren't delivered. And as always with every single Kotaku author, if they're going to boo or criticize fan service from Stellar Blade, just go to their account and try to search for anything that has to do with Baldur's Gate 3. And of course, ding, 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 here's Claire Jackson, the same author, making this article about Baldur's Gate 3, saying Baldur's Gate 3 players, now speed running sex. Speedrunner May shows us how to skip all the boring parts and get straight to the hot stuff, which I would imagine is like the, the uncensored full frontal genitalia in the game, or also like the scenes where players have the option to have sex with bears. That's probably what they're referring to, and of course, that's totally fine, that's totally kosher, but anything to do with Stellar Blade and the character Eve, oh, gross, icky fan service, just go watch Poontang instead, as expected with Kotaku. Now, we're going to move over to Sweet Baby, which obviously has a lot of relation to Kotaku, and one of their clients and their projects they work on is God of War Ragnarok, and just like anything they touch, whether it's their direct influence or not, there's always something wrong, okay? And this is the, the latest news involving God of War Ragnarok. Apparently now, Sony is going to require users to install and link up a PlayStation Network account on PC to keep playing this game. They have learned absolutely nothing from the Helldivers 2 fiasco, which, by the way, is still a mess, despite Sony somewhat pretending like they're going to fix 
the concerns of players there. But as you can see from the replies, people are seeing through this crap. Okay, they've had enough. You can see some of the replies saying this. Bro, why? It literally has zero multiplayer elements, unlike Ghost and Helldivers. Time to bully Sony again because this is outrageous. Sony failing to learn a lesson. So it's okay when it's Microsoft or any other company, but it's bad for Sony. Y'all are desperately pathetic and people are still trying to defend all this stuff. It's crazy. They just do not learn. So yeah, people are pretty fed up with this. And of course, people are going to still support Sony and their decisions no matter what. But that's just kind of par for the course at this point. But yeah, there's a lot to, uh, to talk about with today's video. A lot of different topics and uh, some frustrating stuff, if you're being honest. But uh, that's going to do it for today. As always, feel free to share your thoughts about today's topics in the comment section down below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.